I'm going to tell you about some work I've done with uh, Julia Minson and Kevin Volpe on the topic of holding the Hunger Games hostage at the gym. And I want to start by telling you about an idea for helping people like Liz Lemon, the lead character on NBC's former hit show 30 Rock. In case you aren't familiar with Liz Lemon's persona, Liz is a 30-something exec who works too much, exercises too little, and is generally a disaster when it comes to self-control. I'd like to make two plausible assumptions about Liz. First, assume Liz wishes she exercised more but lacks the self-control. And second, assume Liz loves thrilling audio novels and, and reading novels, but she feels guilty wasting her time reading this kind of trash. I'm going to tell you about an idea for solving both of Liz's problems at once, and I call it temptation bundling. The idea is simple. What if Liz only allowed herself to read trashy novels while exercising at the gym? She'd stop wasting time at home on literary garbage and start craving trips to the gym to find out what happens next in her latest thriller. <laughs> Not only that, but she'll enjoy her workout and her novel more combined. She won't feel guilty reading the novel, and time will fly while she's at the gym. So as important as it is to increase exercise and reduce wasted time, this idea could solve many other types of self-control problems as well. So for the women in the room, this will particularly apply. Imagine only allowing yourself to get a pedicure while completing an overdue manuscript review. <laughs> or imagine only allowing yourself to eat the burger you crave at your favorite burger restaurant while spending time with a cranky relative. Or to watch your favorite TV show while catching up on your laundry or to buy the Starbucks mocha you like so much in the morning when heading to the library to study. These are all examples of temptation bundling. We wanted to see whether temptation bundling was actually an effective method of solving self-control problems, so we ran an experiment at Patrick Gym right across the street. What our experiment was aiming at was testing whether or not we could increase people's exercise by bundling exercise with something tempting. And in this case, what we used were audio novels. So we randomly assigned about 220 participants to one of three experimental conditions. In our full treatment group, participants in our study were given the opportunity to pick four audio novels from a list of 82 tempting books. And the most popular book was The Da Vinci Code or The Hunger Games. Then these participants loaded those four audio novels onto a loaned iPod and listened to the first 30 minutes of a novel of their choice. We told them after their workout, if they wanted to hear what happened next, they'd have to come back to the gym where we'd be holding their loaned iPod in a locked, monitored locker. <laughs> Our intermediate treatment group also picked four audio novels and loaded those novels onto an iPod, and they listened to those books while completing a 30-minute workout. But this group could listen to those novels on their iPod whenever they pleased. We simply encouraged them to try, using their own self-control, to only listen while exercising. And finally, our control group also completed a 30-minute workout at the start of our study, but this group, instead of receiving audio novels, received a $25 gift certificate to Barnes & Noble, which was equally valued by our study population. Then the question was, did this increase exercise? And what we see is that over the first seven weeks of our study, our full treatment group visited the gym about one extra time every two weeks relative to a control, the baseline controls at zero, and our intermediate treatment worked sort of in between the other two. So it was increasing exercise just to be able to have this idea of tying exercise with tempting devices yourself. So that's great news. But then along came Thanksgiving break. Participants went home. Maybe they forgot about the incredibly enticing story they were listening to. And when they came back, the effect was wiped out. <laughs> so on the one hand, this is bad news. It means we have more work to do to figure out how to make this work over the long term. But on the other hand, it's kind of interesting because it suggests that perhaps indeed the mechanism we suspect is at work here is at work. So if you want to reduce cravings, exactly what you should do is create a period of forced abstinence, which is what Thanksgiving break did. All right, so it looks like there's some benefit to temptation bundling, potentially, at least over the short run. But an important question is, will anyone buy it? Is there a market for this type of temptation bundling device? And so we asked this at the end of our study. After 10 weeks, all our participants were truthfully told they had a good chance of winning an iPod in a lottery that was preloaded with a tempting audio novel of their choice. And the question we asked them was, would you pay us to take away that iPod and lock it at the gym in a monitored locked locker for a month so you could only access it while exercising? So this is a value-destroying option from traditional economic theory. People should not be willing to pay us to take away a possession they could otherwise use freely. 
But when we use a Becker to Groot Marshak incentive compatible elicitation method, what we see is about 65% say they're interested in the program, and 61% would pay us a dollar or more to take away their tempting audio novels and lock them at the gym. So in short, this suggests there may be a commercial market for this kind of temptation bundling device. So imagine Netflix creating a new program, for instance, where you could set aside certain TV shows for gym-only access. Or you could imagine an iPod app that allows you to set certain geolocations where you could access your Facebook account or other tempting content. And I will leave you there. Thank you very much.